Hey, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great training video. Today we're going to show you how to install internal splice boxes. These are Aranko internal splice boxes uh, inside of an ultra rib riser. And we're going to go ahead and do this the field method rather than use any specialized tools because uh, we want to make this video a little bit more generic for just your everyday folk trying to get these splice boxes installed. So what you'll need, um, and of course you can improvise, but what we're going to use is uh, we've got a grinder here with a cutting wheel, and then we've also got a sanding disc. Um, we've got a splice box. Now I've got a couple splice boxes on the table because uh, it's just important to note that this is a six cord splice box or otherwise known as an SB6. Uh, and this is a four cord splice box. Uh, the important thing to note is that the conduit size on these is actually two different sizes. So uh, that has a big impact on what size hole you're gonna need to drill with your hole saw, uh, so make sure you pay attention to that. And uh, there is going to there is a sizing chart. We can put that in the description so that you know the appropriate hole saw size to use for whatever conduit uh, or whatever splice box it is that you're installing. And then lastly, uh, well, I guess a couple other things. We've got the uh, grommet which goes around the conduit here and actually seals between the riser and the uh, the splice box and so forth. And then we've got some ADH100. This is an Orenco adhesive that is used. It's essentially like a silicon-like adhesive um, and it's used to seal around that gasket and provide a nice watertight seal. And then of course to drill to run the whole saw. So we've got all of our tools that we're gonna need to get this uh, installation done properly. So let's get to work. All right, so uh, before we get started drilling holes and, and messing this thing up here, um, we're gonna go ahead and perform a measurement to make sure that we're reaching the depth that we wanna achieve on this. Now, here in Idaho, we typically will go about, uh, about 12 inches. So that would put us in between this rib here. And we've actually got it marked at 12 inches. Um, and then when you're running conduit, you go down to 18 inches, at least currently that's the code. Um, so you would just quickly transition down to 18 inches uh, for your burial. But um, since this particular unit, we're gonna be installing the splice box as a demonstration and for display purposes, we're gonna actually install a little bit higher than normal. So just take note of that. And, uh, and we'll probably put this one uh, right here on this fourth rib, just a little higher than normal just so it's a little easier access and we can kind of show it a little bit better uh, with the different camera angles. All right, and it's always a recommendation whether you're a, a seasoned installer or uh, somebody doing this for the first time that you go ahead and inspect the equipment, open it up, and inside of these uh, splice boxes, there's actually installation instructions. So uh, once again, whether you've done this a million times or doing it for the first time, it's a great idea to review these uh, installation instructions and just refresh yourself on exactly how to properly do this. So, um, and as with any Aranko product that I'm familiar with, you're always gonna find instructions and, and uh, anything relevant document wise in the product, whether it's a control panel, a, a pump, you're gonna find that in the box or, or a splice box. So uh, we'll review these instructions real quickly and uh, be sure to follow along as we kind of go through there and uh, we'll, we'll get started drilling some holes. All right, so we're just about to use the drill uh, and the hole saw to go ahead and punch our hole uh, through the side of the riser here. And uh, we've got just a standard hole saw blade on there, but uh, Aranko does actually have these very unique um, hole saws that actually have what they call rib cutters on them or a cutter on them. And what that does is as you drill your hole, it also knocks these ribs away. Cause what we're gonna have to do and the way that I'm gonna show you how to do it is a little bit of a, a harder method uh, or the field installation method where you may not have this specialty tool. Cause uh, if you've ever priced these out, you'll know that Aranko doesn't give these away. They're, they're a pretty spendy little item and it's because each one of them has to be machined very carefully uh, in order to function properly. I'm not gonna show you how to do this one, but this is the definitely the recommended method to go just cause it makes this process a lot quicker. Uh, but if you're not doing these on a regular basis, then this is going to be the method I'm going to show you is going to be a good way to just kind of work around uh, getting these installed with what you've got. Uh, 
The battery in our drill is obviously getting low, but we made it through without any problems. All right, so we've got the hole drilled now. Um, and what we're going to have to do, like I said, is knock these ribs back so that we can get that grommet installed because it needs to sit in there very nicely. So the, the grommet, it's kind of got a groove that rolls all the way around it. So we've got to knock these ribs back enough that we're going to be able to get that to sit in there just, just flatly without any interference from those ribs. All right, now we've got the, uh, the grinder out with the cutter wheel on. We're just going to cut these back. Uh, so that we can then come back and try to sand them down if needed uh, and then we'll be able to get that grommet in there. All right, so we've got the uh, the whole rough cut in here. Now it's not the prettiest cut in the world, um, and that's just because that's the way it happens when you've got to got to do it in the field, and and uh, it doesn't always come out pretty. So we've got this uh, sander wheel. We're going to throw on the grinder and just kind of brush some of these areas up and make them a little smoother, so that that uh, gasket has a nice smooth surface to seat to. All right, now I'll just use my handy dandy uh, pocket knife and uh, just kind of deburr this up a little bit. You can see sanding it down. We took the ribs all the way down and uh, we've got plenty because you've only got enough, have enough flatness to cover the depth of the, the lip in there or the, the rib or what do you want to call that? It's got fiberglass all over. Um, so this is going to be more than enough. I probably could have taken that back just slightly more, but it's going to be more than enough for for what we've got going on here so just kind of run this through here getting all these little burrs off making it nice and smooth all right that looks great okay so with this area cleaned off um, it's probably not a bad idea to, to wipe this down if you've got a towel or, or a rag handy just to minimize the, the dust and so forth and, and make sure it's just that much easier for this gasket to seal. So I'm going to go wipe this down and then I'll be right back and we can go ahead and install this gasket. Alright, so now we've got the uh, ADH100 and we're ready to install the gasket. Um, so we'll just take a, a bead of this and uh, run it around the inside of this gasket here and just get a couple good globs on there and then just kind of fill in the gaps with your finger all right now we just kind of kind of work this around kind of fill it in and uh, you don't have to worry about going light on this stuff you want to you want to go pretty heavy because an important or having a, a seal, a, a well sealed tank is, is definitely important uh, when it comes to your system operating properly. All right, so put a nice, it's nice and thick and messy, um, which is just going to help that thing seal that much better. You kind of just shove that grommet in there like that. And if you got a towel nearby, you can clean up that excess real quick. So it's a little, I guess, more appealing, even though it's going to be buried, so it doesn't much make a difference. But maybe inside the tank, kind of clean up the excess, and then, um, and then you're ready to shove the splice box through. All right, so we're just going to install a splice box. I've got a little bit of lubricant here that's just going to help uh, make installing it easier. And I do recommend getting the splice box installed before the uh, the gasket sealant dries 
because once this ADH 100 dries, it makes it that much more difficult to get that uh, get that splice box in. So. Or a very tight fit. All right, so you make sure that that's all the way in, and that your uh, your gasket's still seated nicely, which we look pretty good. Which this is actually a pipe grommet. I keep calling it a gasket, but uh, you guys know what I mean, right? All right, so now we've got the splice box installed and everything looks good. Um, if you were struggling at all to get that splice box in, uh, like I was just a little bit, um, you can bevel these edges just slightly to kind of allow it to go in just a little bit easier. Uh, but you know, hindsight 2020, we are uh, we are here now and it's installed. So uh, the next thing that's nice to do is to take a, a conduit PVC coupling, this is just a conduit uh, Schedule 40 PVC coupling, and uh, put that around the outside. And you wanna make sure that you go ahead and glue that or uh, cement that, PVC cement that in, because what this is gonna do is when you got the splice box pushed up as far as it can go, or pushed out as far as it can go, and then this coupling is, is uh, sealed in place, and then you cement it in there, then it, the splice box can't back out, which is really important. Um, we used to put a bolt through here and then kind of screw or bolt the splice box to the side of the riser, but that creates one extra, uh, one extra hole and one extra opportunity for water to penetrate the splice box. So we've kind of gone away from that and we've gone to this model uh, where we just throw that on there and, uh, and permanently lock it in place. And we're ready to hook up our conduit. The nice thing about this is this is a one inch conduit uh, or in the inside of the splice box is a three quarter conduit. So you can hook up to it with either one of your conduits and you're gonna be in good shape. All right, so that's our video today. Uh, I just wanted to leave you with a couple of final thoughts uh, on in internal versus, uh, versus external splice boxes. So there's definitely some pros and cons associated with internal and external splice boxes, which we're gonna follow this video up with an external splice box installation video. Uh, the external splice boxes essentially sit just like this, uh, well, just like this, um, and then this gasket seals. So it's gonna be a similar installation, but we'll go ahead and put that video together for you. But anyways, uh, on to a couple of pros and cons that are associate, associated with these splice boxes. The internal splice boxes are very reliant on uh, on a properly sealed conduit connection. It's pretty regular that we'll go up to a job site or out to a location or, or even talk to somebody um, across the country, it doesn't really matter, um, where they open the, the lid to their internal splice box and it's just plumb full of water. Uh, so what you wanna do is ensure that you've got good conditions and properly sealed conduit all the way uh, to the control box and that's really going to help you eliminate that water getting in there. Uh, so the second thing that you're going to want to pay attention to is uh, the, the uh, wire nuts that are provided by Arenco that are inside of this splice box are great. They're the uh, silicon feel, filled uh, self-sealing wire nuts so they work really great for a, a small amount of contact with with water or condensation, but we have in our stock a splice kit that actually works much, much better because it uses a resin uh, and we encapsulate that splice inside of a PVC vial. So a PVC vial with a resin. So if, you, if you're worried about that or you've experienced a situation where your splice box is getting full of water and you don't know where the water's coming from and you want to protect that wire connection, we do have a solution for that. Go ahead and uh, give us a call or, or uh, uh, shoot us an email and we can get you the details on that. But I just wanted to kind of highlight some of the pros and cons associated. Uh, not to mention that with the internal splice boxes, 
uh, your everyday plumber or uh, router guy or, or whoever it might be that you call when you initially have a problem before uh, you maybe kind of bring out the big guns or the pump specialist. Um, a lot of those guys don't like getting into the basin, whether it's opening it up and working on the things inside there. And an external splice box kind of takes that issue out. Uh, with an external splice box, they don't have to gain access to the tank. They simply remove the top here and then they can perform any electrical tests. Um, so it makes it a lot more appealing for those types of folks. But uh, with another component that's accessible via the ground, especially wiring connections, there's definitely some inherent risks associated there. Um, you know, I'd love to hear in the comments below any other experiences you may have had or any other comments you have relating to the pros and cons between these two splice boxes. Uh, in those great comments that we get from you, we may make a follow-up video and just kind of address those. So uh, share your stories, we would really appreciate it. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for more great content. We'll catch you next time.